All right, let's paint. Hey okay, guys, this is video two. I'll probably forget how to count the videos as we move through this. It's gonna take a little while. Um, I wanna be able to show you guys stuff. So I have the, um, the, uh, the paint here so you'll be able to see it. Now, you wanna go with thirds. You wanna go uneven thirds. So really, our center of interest is gonna be here. So we'll end the road here. Okay, so we got that. Just kind of blocking it in. Just shook the brush. So if we got this, then I'm switching over to the next picture of the mountains. That's not really the big deal. So we'll end that here. So you see, it's big, and then it's smaller, and then the mountains are gonna be over here. I got my clouds. Here's the mountain, and the mountain's gonna go this way. So what we have now, and the clouds will go this way. So we have this giant S shape, and that's our composition. And that's it, go home. See that? So you got that. Um, some people are making comments, Corey told me, that they're having trouble seeing. Well, yeah, of course, because it's a lay-in. So, if you guys get a demo and it's you can see it finished right from the start, it's probably not done right, because the lay-ins are supposed to be super, super light. All right? All right, so we got that. So here's my composition. It's this giant S. This is the scary part. Now we switch to another brush. This is funny. We're using these uh, crazy, crazy brushes. That's funny silver plated brushes does it make you draw any better no does it make you paint any better no but i don't play golf i don't know the thought of hitting a ball around grass you know golf was actually invented they it's all planned out it's all research that for people who don't draw um like sports you know sports was invented for people who don't draw i mean if you can draw hello why do you need supports? And then, um, let's see, what else? Just about everything is for people who don't draw. I mean, if you draw, then you're, you're all good. So we're gonna kind of vignette. Vignette means it fades off to nothing. So I got the bushes here, and that's gonna cast a shadow across this walkway. And then uh, come here, and then, uh, bush here okay so that's this part and then it goes off into a tree so we need to put a bush here okay and that's gonna Cal State cool this so this is going this way and then this goes like that boom okay and then uh, so it goes like this and goes here now we go to the mountains, because this is going to be a, this bush. It's going to take us that way. Now, with the mountains, I'm going to flow this way. We're going to go another Cal State Cool here. See that? Now, if you don't know what Cal State Cool is, go take a look at the other videos. Um, I was talking to Corey the other day, like, what do you want to do? And he was saying, we need to put some closure on this. I said, you know, you're right. Um, you know, I look, I look at the internet a lot, and there's just it doesn't have like a program. Even the, a lot of the schools, it's not like a cohesive program where, you know, it walks you through, and then you kind of got what you need. So when he's done with the the new website, I think what we're going to do is uh, put together a program so that you can take all the fundamentals and then start applying it to the different areas and actually do something with your art. So um, if you don't know what all those things mean, then uh, we'll take care of it. Okay, so this is my green area here. Now I want to get to the part that I'm really excited about, which are these mountains. And that's going to be this one here. This has a natural flow. So you want to be able to, to look and see so if you look over here at the mountain, see if you guys can see this. 
You see this has these rhythms. Those are my Cal State Cools, see? So I'm gonna go this way. See how nature's doing this? See the, the trees are going this way in Cal State Cools. Then this tree is going this way in Cal State Cools here. See it? So it goes like this and it goes like this and then these take you back. And then they stop here on this tree. So nature has given us, and then you get here, you completely stop. And then you wave this way, and then you wave back. See? So nature gives us all this stuff to work with. You just have to be able to see it. In order to see it, you have to know it exists. And we're at five minutes. We're doing our lay-in. So the lay-in has to have these rhythms. And again, the more you know that they're there, the more you can look for them. And then you're all good to go. Okay. So let me get back to where I was. Okay. So now I have, let me see if you guys can still see the paint. Yeah. All right, we're gonna get lost in this. And then we go this way. So this is going like that this bumping back this way waving down here because your center of interest is going to be here so this walks us to that so we have that we're going to do a diagonal right here it's a really nice diagonal so if this was a renaissance painting there'd be a baby a mom and a baby right here they're really into their moms and babies okay so we got that and there we go now the painting's done. So let's have some fun. You can start anywhere you want. Um, I think I'm gonna do some of the walkway just to key it. Now remember, we're not painting right out of the tube. That yellow, and I'm immediately going for like a red. And if I have you know that yellow, I might hit a green and then some dirt. Everything's kind of muted. My key color is usually green because I like it. Right now my students are laughing because they all know. So I'm putting in this wet area here. So I want to touch it. See how that flows inside? That's watercolor. So I got that. Um, got this going that way. All right, so that keys that. So I'm going to leave that for right now, just so you get something on there. Now I'm going to jump over to the uh, the middle area because that's going to be the tough part. So it's green. You can actually take like a blue or a purple and kill the green. I don't get really mathematical with all this stuff. My favorite's olive green, which is right here. Now, here's a weird thing. Look outside and you'll find that nature it kind of goes in threes. So if you look at your trees, they'll clump in groups of three. It's really weird. All right, so that's gonna be light there. Now we get lost. So I'm trying to play with positive versus negative shape. Here's where the uh, the road comes down here, and there'll be some trees. So I'm going to wave this way, you know, the wave like that. 
This is the wave. This is cool. And that's bitchin'. So this will go on forever and ever. This will stop. And that will wave. So those are the musical notes of painting. If your brush feels too big, it's just about right. And these brushes are crazy. They're so soft. It's weird. Light source will be going this way. Then you touch the paint and let the water do the job. So wet moves fast. See how fast it's moving? Then draw um, satin, you look at it, it has kind of a satiny feel. That will um, move slower. And then when it's dry, you can put in your accents. Notice how I'm using the side of the brush. Be careful with the tip. You can burn out a brush really easy. And this is brush probably several hundreds of dollars. So you want to be careful. Remember our fundamentals with cross contours like that. You know, moving the color across. Now I have this purple, blue, green, you know, olive green. So I can kind of mix across and around. Start thinking of your positive and negative shapes. Lights come in this way, but these can be cast shadows here. See, when you have your brush and you get to keep that tip, you can really put in those details. You want to just use it just for that. Just shook the brush really hard to get the paint out of it water out of it so now I can come back and hit that. Okay, so while that's drying, we go to another place. So you're constantly working around the painting as it's wet and dry, wet, sat, and dry. And now the brush strokes that you put down follow rhythms like music. So typically right now I would have music playing. Corey says no. So, who is Corey? Corey is a genius. Started out as a student and became a family friend. My family loves him. And now he's my boss. There you go. Boom, boom. And of course he you know, gets me out of all my computer problems. But we love Corey. There you go. Okay, so we've got that way off in the distance, okay? Um, we can work our way back and come forward. Let's see how much time we have. 14 minutes. Um, we'll go a little bit longer. Let's have some fun with the uh, way off in the background. So this is going to be really soft back here, really light. So with this mountain, 
you want to be playing with the negative shade because you can't paint white in watercolor. You can, but a little rough. I always thought you used water masks, and I look at Sargent's work, and I'm like, wow, look at the way he controls those lights. And then I went to a show, and I'm standing there, and I'm looking at his paintings, and he's got gobs of white all over the place, just caked on. And everybody must have thought I was crazy because I stood there and I looked at the painting and I said, you lied to me. And, uh, but it did teach me how to control my white, you know, my, uh, control my whites. So there's that diagonal we're talking about. This is the negative space. This is the sky. I'm going to put some clouds in there, so leave that alone. So now I have the foreground, middle ground, background. So I'm going to come in with a neutral, kind of grayish brown. Now, the question is, do I know what colors these are? <laughs> I don't. I know when it gets over here. I don't know. It looks dark. It looks light. It looks warm. I, I go, when I paint, I paint temperature. <laughs> it's really funny. I don't sit there and that's my cad red light. You know, I do have my palette that I use, but and I have it memorized, but uh, I don't know. Like right now, I'm just looking for whatever is going to give me a nice neutral kind of a greenish gray background. Because remember, everything is green. Okay, so here we go. What time is it? Uh, 17 minutes. We'll start doing some lands. This is going to be in shadow here. So, oh man. Um, I want to go this way into this Cal State Cool here. So, start putting in. See, this light's going this way, but there's shadows. See, there's clouds, so the light's coming through the clouds from all different directions. So, I can do that. I'm putting in the shadow side. When you paint, you predominantly are looking for shapes. Um, see, I'm a lot. This way. You know, I'm not going to animate this mountain. So, and if I had to, I'd probably build it in 3D. So it's you know it's a painting. It's one time. So just going for shapes. But if I were drawing it, so that I was going to move a camera around or something, then I have to structure every little piece out. And that's where you get the animation training. My students learn it all. I make them do it all. So at our school, you know, we start them classic figure drawing right from the start, classic drawing. You know, when they're, you know, we have little kids in there that are seven, eight years old that are, uh, you know, they're learning the same school, the Florentine school, but they might be using a cartoon character, but they're still learning scribble shape form. Um, we have 12-year-olds doing full-blown figure drawing. That's pretty common at our school. Learning anatomy, structure. Uh,
Ooh, some edges. Let's push in this way. Because this is going to go that way. I got my window closed, but you can hear the gardeners in the background. I'm really controlling the values back. Hear the gardeners in the background. That's not ours. You can hear ours going right by my window. There's always somebody getting something done in this neighborhood. See how it's kind of satiny? It's starting to get dry there. We could warm it up a little bit, just have a little sunshine. Let's try that, not too much. Shake the brush. So I'm switching my uh, my light around. Remember when uh, Jiminy Cricket sang in that documentary Pinocchio? Only let the model be your guide. So. You know, switch it around. Somebody put some light on there. A little bit green, maybe. So that's going off in the distance, and this is coming towards us. So it's getting stronger, more chroma, a little more contrast. But there's still a cheerleader in there yelling, push it back, push it back, way back. And this is what it's like in a studio. Except I don't even talk this much. So this Friday I start teaching at San Jose. And I will be insane. I mean, these kids are going to think I was out of my mind. But last night, I stayed up. I couldn't sleep. I was like 1, 2 in the morning. Because I kept going over in my mind what I want to do the first day. And uh, there's so much preparation that goes into acting like an idiot. So they're going to think that you know, I'm like this fool singing and dancing. But you remember it. And that's the thing. You know, they'll say, you know, you hear the kids walking down the hallway after your class and they're going, that teacher was crazy. And another one says, what did he do? And they go, he did this and this and this. And at that point, they're repeating my lecture. And they get full retention with no notes. And I win. So I've tried to go the other way, and it just doesn't work. OK, so now we have our land, our foreground. We have a lot of contrast. Middle ground, a little bit less. Background, really pushed back. All right, let's see how much time this is. And that's 24 minutes. Let's move on to the next video.